Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Super Bowl Sunday, February 5th, 2012. Uh, today I wanted to go over just a few trade ideas. Uh, some of these are on the uh, current watch list. Uh, they may be either existing trades or trade setups, and uh, quite a few of these are new trades. Uh, I also have uh, quite a few more to go through, but I'll, I'll break this up um, into uh, at least two different videos today. Uh, course depending on the time the second video might not probably won't get out until after the game tonight uh, I've got quite a few things today uh, among other things I coach a little league so I have to head out for a practice here in a little bit so here we go uh, let's start with ES uh, this this trade uh, not one of my favorites uh, but then again I do try to put everything I see up uh, or a lot of what I see up uh, because you never know which ones play out sometimes your favorite trades um, aren't really the big winners. Sometimes it's a little trades you're watching, maybe a breakout that slowly creeps above uh, a break point on very low volume and and then turns out to be the big winner. In fact, we've seen quite a few of those lately. So start with ES, Energy Solutions, and simply what we have here is a stock, um, pretty much a story on just about anything right now, quite extended, uh, very overbought near term. This is a daily chart we're looking at here and we've come up to a, a pretty decent resistance level. Uh, if you take a look over here, we are in a thin zone on the uh, volume at price histogram, these, these colored bars, the green and red bars. Um, and what I would expect of ES, again, it is very overbought in the near term, so a couple ways to play this. Uh, uh, you know, quick trader, people who are comfortable on the short side could, could put a short here right under that level and try to, to get a quick pullback. Uh, anybody that wants to maybe consider this as a long, again, my preference would be that this stock either pulled back or consolidated first. Um, but once it gets up in this level, it's very, very thin, as you can see over here from the histogram, which of course is also reflected in prices. You don't have a whole lot of prices. You had this quick drop here, and that's just about it. So uh, I would expect Again, preferably a consolidation or pullback first, but if it can punch up into this level, it could probably quickly fill that void here and, and, and hit this target. Uh, but again, a couple ways to play that. So I just wanted to point that one out. Okay, the next trade is ISRG, Intuitive Surgical. This is one I've been watching for a while. I don't believe I've posted this on the site yet. It's possible I may have, but I don't believe so. Uh, either way, I've been tracking this this channel here for a while. Uh, let's let's actually extend this line. Uh, so I've been tracking this uptrend channel, and as as you can see, it's a pretty pretty well defined channel. It starts down here with a few touches. Um, we've had one touch here. You know, ultimately I like to see prices come back down here to validate that lower trend line. However, you know, we have a pretty distinct uh, upper trend line forming here uh, with one, two, really you consider that a third touch. It's a little shy, but close enough uh, for government work. So you would you know, probably consider that a reaction off the trend line. And now here we are today. So uh, what I'd be looking for is a reaction off this trend line. Uh, as always, several ways to to skin a cat or play a trade. Uh, an aggressive trader might want to put a, a short on here, expecting a reaction off this, this uh, upper trend line. A uh, more conservative trader might want to wait to see that reaction first and then some type of pullback. Uh, I haven't added it here yet, but very often when I draw channels, larger channels on larger time frames, uh, I will add a, a a line somewhere in the middle and as you can see here if I were to start a line at this point where the mouse is come up here cut through all this noise and then here and here you probably have an uptrend line let me let me go ahead and do that now and just see how that looks you know something something along these lines you can move it around play with it a little bit but uh, you might look for a first target you know come back to about the middle of that channel here on this line possibly um, horizontal support in this area here again uh, as always with a stop above the channel uh, although I will say with the momentum we've had in this market uh, a lot of the uh, short trades I've looked at you know part of my trading style is to short at resistance if, if stocks look overbought uh, if there's confirming divergences on the um, 
uh, indicators and oscillators down below and uh, I've had quite a few trades lately like that that just kept going right through through that resistance level and that is indicative of a a strong momentum market we have a, a lot of momentum and and things tend to overshoot now, I'll probably talk about that in a few of the trades here that I covered today or, or tonight or in the next couple of days uh, I've seen a few wedge and, and channel overshoots lately which from my experience when you have a, a well-defined channel and not really referring to this one in particular we only have a few points here but on, on well-defined channels and wedges I often see especially as a channel is very mature you know in time or a wedge is approaching the apex you know anywhere 80 percent or so towards the apex that when you get those overshoots to the upside um, typically you see a quick reaction in the opposite direction a breakdown back into and often below the wedge or the channel so uh, anything goes here but again a couple ways to play that I just wanted to point that out for you uh, pattern you know a lot of people like to trade channels and ideally on a channel you want to be a seller at the top whether you are long or you want to come in and short and then a buyer down uh, on the bottom of the channel and again as I mentioned sometimes you can even trade within the channel if you can pick up some clear patterns and one other thing to point out on ISRG there are divergences in place on the weekly chart as well as on the uh, daily chart so that that helps confirm my bias that we'll probably in the near future get a reaction at or near this level here uh, meaning a down downward reaction okay IYT the transportation ETF uh, transportation index ETF uh, I've, I've mentioned this one in the past. I've had trend lines drawn, which uh, I've had to widen out a little. We had a false break. Oh, it's hard when, when I put the mouse here, it blurs this line. But we had a false, just a temporary breakdown there, and patterns closed back up. I moved this trend line out just a hair. Uh, pretty, pretty solid. You know, you've got some points here, here, here. Quite a few touches along the way. And it's wedging pretty tightly here. Um, coming up approaching its highs but very very overextended in the short term and in even the intermediate time frames uh, there are divergences in place negative divergences in place uh, again uh, on this one um, you know to avoid jumping the gun you'd want to set a uh, alert for a trend line break here and that may be an objective short entry uh, for a pullback to this is the first level I'm targeting right here this horizontal line so um, that'd be a pretty decent trade you're talking about you know five points on 95 you know about six percent or so uh, if it broke at current levels okay here's KLAC this is another one that I've mentioned recently and um, same story as IYT in fact the chart looks very similar um, as far as its its wedge shape um, same quite a few trend line touches here and we did have uh, as I mentioned before a couple breaks on this one and I've, I've moved this trend line out to to adjust accordingly um, because we have some more points so early on I had a little bit tighter trend line and uh, we had a few false breaks at least on that trend line so I've widened it now and um, what you notice here is we're right at or near the previous highs on KLAC very overbought uh, in the intermediate and short term frames um, like most other things long term I wouldn't consider us overbought you know viewing you know the weekly charts and um, things such of that nature but then again short term intermediate term and again taken in conjunction with all the red flags in the market uh, you know sooner or later we're gonna have a pullback and, and with the uh, move up that we've had with the momentum move it's probably gonna be a pretty quick quick pullback make may only last a day or two or or it, uh, could be you know morph into something a little bigger than that but either way targets are marked here in fact I may update this one I may put a chart on uh, a static chart up tonight this this would be my first pullback target where I'm holding this horizontal line you see these there's a little shelf of support right here quite a few touches so call that about the 44 call it the 4450 area uh, I'm sorry 4950 area for a quick pull back and then if things really get going we could probably fall down to this level here okay here is symbol KO coca-cola company and on this stock uh, looks like we're looking at a, a, a pretty pretty decent um, uh, not 
called complex, uh, just a pretty straightforward head and shoulders pattern with uh, double shoulders, which which is common in, in head and shoulders pattern. I mean, usually the most common you have one shoulder on each side. Sometimes you'll get one left shoulder, two right shoulders, or uh, two and two on the shoulders. But either case, um, this would be your neckline here, this uh, line and left shoulder one, left shoulder two, had everything there is marked pretty clearly. Uh, I have looked at the volume patterns and, and they're pretty decent, um, uh, but what we would have to see here to confirm those, uh, the most important criteria when, when trying to scrub a head and shoulders uh, pattern for volume is the volume off the, the final, the right shoulder, and so far we haven't seen much of an uptick in volume sort of jives well to what we're seeing in the markets. The markets themselves, just about every stock has had pretty low volume on this rise. Here's Coca-Cola not participating in this um, buying frenzy that we're currently experiencing in the market, uh, which is, you know, something to be said right there. Um, for whatever reason, this stock is not being bid up like a lot of the other ones out there. Um, you can take that as bearish if you want. And uh, what we'd need to see at this point is a move lower on increased volume ideally down to this neckline and that would uh, put the pattern in place finalize that pattern and then of course the ultimate trigger would be a break of this pattern uh, so uh, normally I wouldn't post this one this early because that might be premature I'd probably wait until that that pattern has formed uh, just to keep things streamlined uh, on the site however here's an uptrend line off the uh, July lows uh, looks pretty looks pretty good and that sort of meshes well with the possibility of this this pattern you know finalizing here uh, if we break down off this trend line uh, especially if there's some volume high volume selling on the way down you know one could prematurely get in here I shouldn't use the word prematurely it, it may work out well it may not uh, I should say a more aggressive trader might enter on a trend line break here uh, hold that short especially if they see an increase on volume down to this neckline and that would probably put in pretty good odds that this pattern would break and um, play out and of course I'll, I'll post some targets at the time you know the the pattern measurement on a head and shoulders you just take the distance from the peak of the head down to the neckline and add that to the breakdown point so again this one you know, a little early to say at this point, but has the potential to be quite a nice swing trade. Uh, let's just look at the uh, weekly chart real quick and, you know, over a longer term view. Um, let's get rid of that. Okay, pardon the pause. I cleaned this chart up a little bit, uh, make it a little more viewable. Uh, what you can see here, this is a weekly time frame we're looking at now, so multi multi year history and just sort of looks like a big big old gradual rising wedge uh, with some pretty clear divergences in place here and a breakdown of this weekly wedge would coincide nicely you know with a breakdown of that daily uptrend line I showed there so uh, as I mentioned in one of the recent updates I did video updates I, I really like to use multiple time frames uh, to confirm trade entries and exits so this one so far is setting up bearish. We don't yet have a sell signal, but just one to watch. Okay, continuing on the theme of uh, very overextended stocks. I mean, here's Moss, Moscow Corp. Uh, looks like, you know, back in October, that was, you know, six and a half dollar stock. Today it's at $13. So we have about a, exactly a double in that stock, you know, 100% return since October. And, you know, with, with one consolidation little breather period in the middle. And, you know, this last leg up looks to be every bit as much as this initial thrust up. So uh, here we are overbought into pretty, pretty well-defined, you know, not the most solid, but pretty well-defined horizontal, horizontal resistance. Uh, I might have posted this one. I'll have to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd have to look at that. Let's just take a quick look at the 60-minute uh, chart here. Um, I believe I did post this one shows a rising channel on the 60 minute a breakdown and a retest here uh, push back to the old highs which uh, are also the that horizontal resistance line on the daily chart we were just looking at that all lines up failure another push up failure um, 
you know, it might be building the energy it needs to punch up through that line. Very possible. Uh, so a couple ways to play this. If um, you're very bullish right now and, um, you know, think this market uh, uh, can get more overbought in the short term before a pullback, which is very possible, uh, then you'd want to enter this long in a break of that line. Um, maybe protect yourself with a stop somewhere somewhere below it. Um, if you believe that a pullback is imminent at this point and there's not much more upside in the market, you could take a shot at shorting here with a stop not too far above. Uh, again, I'm advising, you know, if you are using that strategy, you have to use stops a little wider than usual because the momentum's so strong or wait for confirmed signal. Also consider scaling in to positions. You don't have to, nor would I advise taking a full position uh, on much of anything right now. Um, personally, I'm keeping it light, passing on a lot of new entries. Uh, I already have a few positions in place that I'll just hold on to for now and um, being very, very selective on, on what I take on entry. But that all could change on a dime depending on what we see happen this week. Okay, two more to go here. Uh, let's look at Moo, the ag agro business ETF. And what we have here, I, I did a whole dissertation, if you will, on, on inverse head and shoulders patterns the other day, uh, uh, how I think they're, they're more commonly used and they probably should be. Typically, inverse head and shoulders are bottoming patterns. And if you look back, especially longer term on a weekly chart on a lot of these, you know, when I show them on the daily charts, people might say, oh, well, that is a bottoming pattern. Look how much we've come down. No, really, if you step back and look at a weekly chart, you know, this is a, just a continuation of a larger move up on, on most stocks off the uh, March 2009 lows. Uh, so if anything taken in view in context of a weekly chart, uh, I'd have to take a look at Moo here real quick. Well, I have to, I'd have to straighten that chart out. Uh, but a lot of these would be considered continuation patterns. Either way, with that being said, uh, if this does turn out to be an inverse head and shoulders pattern, and the important thing, if, if there are a lot of eyes looking at it that way, and and we know this market is very thin right now, and it's driven by technicals, so. Uh, if the majority, is a, majority of traders watching this uh, think that's the pattern and they're going to buy it on the breakout, then so be it. That's, that's what's going to happen here. All right, so we have a possible left shoulder here, head, right shoulder. That's marked pretty clearly. I have two alternative necklines. I, this would have been my probably my ideal neckline, preferred neckline, neckline one. Uh, somewhere in that area. I could maybe move this up a hair, but if so, then we had a breakout here. However, I've noted some horizontal resistance I, I see across this level, including a gap and a bunch of candlestick touches. Uh, and we're up against that now. So anybody not already in Moo, uh, if you want to try to trade that uh, inverse head and shoulders breakout, uh, you probably just as well at this point uh, wait for a break above this line, maybe a pullback to this, this trend line here, this possible neckline. But also keep in mind, like everything else, very overextended in the short term, although not as much. You have a lot of consolidation here in, in Mu, more so than other stocks. So it, it has been consolidating in this area for a while. Uh, and if it wants to, it, it probably does have enough energy to punch up and keep going. But I did want to point out, here is a key downtrend line off the uh, uh, Mu actually top before the market back in February of 11, where is the market topped uh, in early May. Uh, so this line could, could prove to be resistance, just something to keep an eye on. Okay, and for the final stock, uh, in this video update at least, as I said, I'll try to do some more uh, later tonight, uh, if possible, after the game. Uh, we have a, a pretty, pretty nice uh, falling wedge on this one. This is a uh, MPAA and what you'd want to look for here is a breakout above this downtrend line. Ideally you do want to see above average volume on a breakout uh, but we've had a few lately that have started out on average and even below average volume and they turned out to be pretty nice winners but again this you know this has been a heck of a momentum market and the old saying goes all ships are lifted in a rising tide so um, you know the low volume on this move is in itself a red flag but Currently, the momentum is up, and uh, keep in mind, the market could pull back. There are always stocks that go up during a primary downtrend and stocks that go down during an uptrend, and that's why I like to keep balance on this site, regardless of my 
views on the market. Uh, when I look at a chart, if I see a bullish chart, I'll post it as is. Uh, bearish chart, and there's plenty of times that I make money going long on stocks in a downtrend and, and make money shorting stocks in an uptrend. Uh, if you're very selective on your patterns, um, that's the most important thing. So with that being said, MPAA on a breakout above this downtrend line, uh, this would be the first target here. Um, and for you longer term traders, this is a daily, this is a pretty large falling wedge pattern on a daily chart. You know, I know a lot of what I put up are 60 minute patterns and, and things uh, shorter term. Uh, but for you investors out there, this stock, uh, especially if the market were to continue, you know, uh, throughout the next few months into the into this year uh, with an uptrend, uh, I could easily see this stock hitting the second target. And then after that, I would have a, a horizontal line right about here. There's a nice gap, quite a few peaks, and that would be my third target. Call it the uh, 1045 area. So. Uh, that's it, folks. And as I said, I will try to update uh, some additional. I actually have a list in front of me. I just have to t have the time to do the video. So I have some more trade ideas coming out. Uh, some other things I'm working on on the site, uh, hopefully to be able to roll those out in the next few days here. So check back. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. And enjoy uh, the game if you're football fans. And uh, if not, to the rest of you. Have a great week and, and stay safe this week. It, we probably will see, uh, my guess, is some volatility in either direction. Um, so just just keep things light for now, or you know, make sure your stops are are in place.